Good evening everyone, welcome back to another photo editing tutorial. If you ever scroll on Instagram and wonder how a photographer got that result or how the Instagram filters are created, I'm going to show you two tools inside of Lightroom Mobile that they probably use to get this effect. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Loic Ben Mahalford, a young photographer and filmmaker on a journey to become better at this art. I publish a new video on photo editing techniques every two weeks, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more how to edit your photos. Okay, so now let's jump right into it. So I already applied a crop to go a little bit faster instead of this edit. I'm also going to apply auto settings for the lighting. Uh, if you want to learn a bit more about how to adjust the lighting, I suggest you go watch my other previous videos where I go in more detail about my choices here. But I'm still going to manually adjust it a little bit. So I'm going to bring down the exposure a little bit more. I'm going to leave the contrast like this. We're going to see another way of controlling contrast that is a lot better. I'm going to bring down the highlights quite a lot. I'm going to bring up the shadows uh, just to add more dynamic range. And then I'm going to bring down the whites a little bit too and bring back up uh, the blacks because I don't want them to be as contrasty as they were. Then I'm going to go in one of the most useful tools inside of Lightroom and when I started using Lightroom I was really scared to use it because it's kind of seemed complicated and it's also really easy to go too far with that tool and make the picture look worse instead of making it look better but it's probably one of the most important tools to know about so I want to talk about it uh, with you right now and it's the curves option here it's also what's called tonal mapping so if you hear these terms they mean the same thing here and you get a chart here where on the uh, bottom left corner here these are pure black, so that means on this axis and this axis, this is a pure black. And at the top corner here, this is pure white. So what this allows to create is, first of all, uh, one thing that a lot of pro photographers talks about, which is a S S-curve. So you can bring contrast by bringing this down here and creating a S curve, a S curve inside of your curve right here. So we're going to see there's now a S here, and now you have a lot of control on how much contrast you can add and you can decide do you want to have more contrast in uh, the mid tones more contrast in the darker tones so you can really control it uh, as you wish so be careful not to go too far really small adjustment can make a huge difference on the shot um, but this is a better way of adding contrast to your shot then the second thing here that we're going to use is to lift the shadows so you probably hear this expression before lifting the shadows and this basically means that you're going to take the blacks and you're going to make them more white in the end. So that's simply what's lifting the shadows. And this is a very, very popular effect in Instagram filters. So we're simply going to see if you look at the darks here, dark parts here of the picture, we're going to take our blacks here and we're going to lift them up and make them more um, white. So they're going to not be as black as pure black anymore. So this is how a curve works. I'm not going to go through the other curves here. I might just adjust it a little bit more. And I think something like this is looking pretty good. Now uh, we can click on done. We're going to go inside of color here. And now instead of adding uh, some saturation or some vibrance on everything, we're going to go inside of the second most useful tool, I think inside of Lightroom uh, that most effects use on Instagram. And it's the mix tool right here. So if you come inside of here, it allows you to change different colors. And this is what you call the HSL uh, section inside of Lightroom. So it stands for hue, saturation and luminance. If you don't know what these terms mean, hue is basically uh, how a color looks like. So you can make a red look more like pink or more like uh, orange in here. Uh, saturation is how much the color is intense. So if it can be less intense or more intense. And luminance is if it's lighter or a brighter or darker in the end. Um, so we're going to come here and we're going to apply one effect here to play with the colors because I think there's a little bit too much green in the shot. I want it to be more orange and yellow because fall colors are usually more orange and yellow. So if we want to get a fall look inside of here, we can come inside of the greens, take our hue slider and move it towards um, the yellows here. And then we can go inside of yellow and do the same. Take the slider and move them towards um, the orange in this case. And we're going to see that the colors inside of the trees changed quite a lot uh, right now. We might bring the saturation up also on the yellow. So I'm just going to come here. Oops, if I can get it. Okay, here. I'm just going to bring up 
a saturation on the yellow because I don't want the whole picture to be more saturated, but I want the yellows, which are the color that I prefer in this shot, to be a little bit more saturated. There's also an option to point colors on the shot to select them and change them individually. So we can come here and select on hue, and I'm gonna use this to change the color of the water. So if I press on the water here, and I move it, I can change the hue of the water. So you can see, I can make it purple or I can make it more teal. So I'm gonna go a little bit more teal here, not too much, I don't want it to be, to be um, too much, but here we're gonna get what's uh, called a teal and orange look inside of the shot. So this is a pretty popular uh, look in most things because these are complementary colors. Um, so it looks pretty good when you have a little bit more teal and more orange in the shot. So this is how you use two of these more advanced tools to modify completely the look of the picture. So now if we go back to the picture and we look at the original one, I don't know why it doesn't show the original one. Wait a second. If we go into versions here and we look at the original one, the current one, you can see it's quite a difference between the two. So we're gonna go back in the menu here. There's another edit I wanna do just to finish it off. And it's going inside of effects here. We're gonna add a little bit of dehaze because um, even though it looks like a perfectly blue sky day, there's still a little bit of haze because the mountains were pretty far. So you wouldn't see as well. So just adding a little bit of dehaze here helps to bring back a little bit more of this contrast in the shot and just make everything look a little bit better uh, in the end. So this is the final edit. I might go back just as usual, go back inside of exposure here, bring back the exposure up a little bit, maybe bring the highlights down even more. And yeah, now we have our very stylized uh, final edit. In the last few videos, I've been using my Google Pixel 4a with Lightroom on it to edit the photos, but I would love to know if you would prefer that I use an iPad, my laptop, or another photo editing software for the next videos. If you want to see more of the hike I did when I took this shot, you can head over to my Instagram where I have an Instagram reel and more pictures of that hike. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please leave the like below. It really does help the channel. And also hit that subscribe button to be notified when I create another photo editing tutorial. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.